Two rival rulings on medical abortion pills came down yesterday. The first from Texas, a federal judge ruling to suspend the FDA's two-decade-old approval of mifepristone. Then just two hours later, a federal judge in Washington state ruling that FDA must keep the medication abortion on the shelves in 17 Democratic states and the District of Columbia. President Biden is vowing to fight this ruling. The DOJ and the FDA have already filed separate appeals. Vice President Harris told reporters Friday night that courts should not be allowed to tell the FDA what it can do. This is a drug that the FDA approved as safe 20 years ago and has been proven to be safe for 20 years. So this is a dangerous precedent. Mifeprestone is part of the most common abortion method in the U.S. Data from hundreds of studies has shown that it is highly safe and effective. Its safety is on par with common over-the-counter pain relievers like ibuprofen and acetaminophen. We're joined now by CNN's Elizabeth Cohen. Um, explain how widely this is used and talk more about the, the safety. Right, Victor, it's been used very wise, widely and it is very safe. I think a lot of people don't know that actually there are more abortions done now with the pills than done surgically. Let's take a look at how that's increased over the years. So since 2020, um, it's gone up and up and up to the point now where more than 53 percent of abortions in the U.S. are done with pills, are medication abortions. And let's take a look at some of the side effects. You know, drugs have side effects. When we look at deadly side effects for every million women who have used mefepristone, there have been 20 deaths. If you look at penicillin, if you look at Viagra, it's many more for penicillin. It's 20 deaths per million users. For Viagra, it's 49 deaths per million users. So actually, when you look at deadly side effects, the mefepristone is safer than many other drugs, not just these two. Victor, and, Amra? And Elizabeth, could you talk about, uh, you know, how this ruling could have long-term impacts on the trust in the FDA approval process? Yes, there is a lot of trust in the FDA approval process. It has been there for many, many decades. And other countries besides the U.S. also rely on it because it is a good process. It is rigorous. And so drug companies apply. They, there's a team of scientists or teams of scientists at the FDA and outside advisors who weigh in on whether or not it should be approved. And here, one judge, all by his lonesome, has said, now, I, I disagree with all of those experts. I don't think this drug should be on the market. So you can imagine the drug companies, when they hear this think, wait a second, are we going to invest millions of dollars in drugs, in life-saving drugs, if a single judge can just say, nah, that needs to come off the market? That is problematic for drug development, and that affects all of us. Uh, sure does. Elizabeth Cohen, uh, appreciate your reporting. Thank you very much. Uh, emergency physician and deputy dean at Brown University School of Public Health, Dr. Megan Ranney, joining us now. Uh, doctor, I mean, this is the most common abortion method in the U.S., as we just heard Elizabeth Cohen report there. First off, I just want to get your reaction uh, to this ruling. I am flabbergasted by this ruling for a judge who has no scientific training to overturn a panel of experts who advise the FDA on the safety and efficacy of a medication is frankly unprecedented. Not only was this medication approved 23, almost 23 years ago, but it's also undergone incredibly rigorous safety monitoring since then. It is part of a a special monitoring program that is applied to only um, a handful of medications across the United States, recognizing that this is a medication that is um, unfortunately subjected to some political debate. And let me be clear, as Elizabeth outlined, the medication is tremendously safe. It is actually far safer to have a medication abortion than to undergo childbirth in terms of the likelihood of severe effects on the body and hospitalization. We don't know, you know, ultimately what will happen with this ruling because, as we know, appeals are now underway and this uh, ruling that puts a pause on this particular uh, medication abortion pill uh, does not take effect or not expect to take effect until uh, about a week from now. But in terms of the confusion that this is going to cause, let's start from the doctor's end and the provider's end. I, I mean, I, I guess there might be a scramble now to find a different medication. 
So this is certainly something that has been uh, under discussion for months among those who do provide medication abortions. For today, in states where medication abortion is legal, nothing changes. But we are waiting to see what happens next. At this point, the FDA has said this is still a st safe and efficacious medication. So for folks that are have an appointment, still show up for your appointment. For doctors who are planning to prescribe, they are getting guidance um, from the American College of Obstetrics and Gynecology, from the American Association of Family Physicians, and from other specialty societies that help us decide kind of what the right next thing to do is for our patients in the context of these conflicting legal rulings. We are not lawyers, right? We're doctors. Right, right. Our goal is to take care of our patients. Sure, sure. Um, and for today, we, we're going to do the same thing. Um, and, and, you know, the, the, the judge in Texas uh, in his ruling said that the FDA 20 some years ago improperly or yeah, improperly approved this abortion pill and that, you know, he had taken into account or the FDA had not taken into account the physiological effects that taking this drug has on women. What do you say to that? The physiological effects of mifepristone and misoprostol, the two medications that go into this medication abortion, are essentially the same as the physiological effects of a miscarriage. So <laughs> many, many women have had miscarriages. It is not a pleasant experience, but it is not inherently unsafe. The judge also alleged that there were psychological effects from these medications. Let me be very clear. There are more than 50 years of studies showing that the psychological effects of abortion are nil. What affects women's mental health is being forced to carry a pregnancy to term. The availability of safe and legal abortion is a strong protection to women's mental health. Uh, and lastly, because uh, as I read, mifepristone is typically used in combination with another drug that you just mentioned, misoprostol. That is still available on the market. So do you think the alternative could be just using misoprostol for those who, who need a medication abortion? And let's say, you know, this pause continues. So should this continue, yes, using misoprostol alone is certainly an option, but it is less effective and associated with a higher number of side effects. The combination of the two medications, the reason we give them together is because they work and they're safe. So it would be a shame for the women of America if they have to resort to a single medication regimen that is less effective than what they currently have access to.